Hey everyone, thanks again for tuning into the Sins Workshop Podcast. Hope you're having a great day. So today we're going to be talking about Storm the Earth by Rebecca Kim Wells. It is the incredible sequel to the already incredible novel Sh- Shadow to the Sky. And I have to say it was as amazing as the first one. I think I liked this one a tad better just because the pacing was more involved it was it was a quicker paced novel when i think back to shatter the sky uh, because shatter the sky really is more about the journey and uh, the journey of marin you know that's really the first novel she really is a soft character in that first novel you do get to see her her grow exponentially and i think what's great with this novel is you continue to see her growth as the story progresses but i think what really drew me to the story is you know it has dragons in it i love a good dragon story and this novel picks up right where the last um novel left off you know right in the midst of all this fire and mayhem that's exactly where this novel picks up and i think that's such a great start because it sets up a great it sets up great momentum for this story i mean there are times that it reminded me of christopher Pellini's inheritance series but just in the way that the dragons and marin interact with each other because Marin is much better not much better she is very different than Ar- Aragon but it does remind me of the Aragon series the inheritance series and you know like I said this novel starts off in all that fire and ash and dragons escaping it, it picks up right where the left, last novel left off and I think it's great that the dragon, the great mother dragon Nava, who, you know, she has spent her entire time being chained up only to be freed by Marin, and she asked for Marin's help. Well, <laughs> Marin asked for her help, and, you know, the dragon's just like, oh, I'll give you my help if you prove you're worth it. You know, she's been, again, she's been held captive. So this really does set a great precedent for. Uh, Marin to can not just continue her journey to save someone she cares about because yes yeah, she saved Kaya at the last novel and I'm going to talk a little bit more about Kaya in uh, a second but she saves Kaya she saves a great dragon but she loses Sev the shadow prince and her journey is not just about saving Sev now it's about saving the dragons and releasing the the country from the tyrannical king she wants to save people and I think that's a really good journey for her to go on and it's a slow journey she's the not slow in the pacing the pacing is very quick but it's a slow journey for her because she's on this trail she doesn't have a dragon she's with her girlfriend things are tense and she's finding little ways here and there to save dragons and I think that's really empowering because a lot of those scenes are very action packed and I do love seeing dragons I love how she talks to the dragons and oh my god the dragon kit the baby dragon that it's adorable I swear it's (laughs) the cutest thing it does their interaction does remind me a lot of Saphira and Aragon's relationship early on in this series she's like a little kitten when I think about it and as I was reading the novel it's just like oh she is so cute the dragon kit is adorable I I love the vibrancy with that dragon I love how it doesn't communicate with words you know it communicates with you know grunts and squeals and squeaks and expressions and the fact that Wells is able to bring to life this little dragon with no dialogue and make it shine it's just it highlights her storytelling her ability to use detail to her advantage when she's telling a story and I guess this is a great segue to talk about the characters um I wasn't a fan of Kai to be honest you know in the previous novel I wasn't that 
thrilled with her either. Uh, I did like the LGBTQ representation, and I loved Marine's devotion to her girlfriend. But Kai has a lot of resentment built up inside. She's the one that's always wanted to shine. She's the one who's always wanted to make an impact. She's the one who's always wanted to ride a dragon and tame the world. And now her girlfriend is the one who is all those things that she wanted. Not only that, their dynamic has shifted. Marine was quite content with just letting Kai make all the decisions and be the decision maker and she was great and she even says so in the novel she she does make a point of saying to Kai in one of their arguments you were the one that was always leading me around and I was fine with that but things are bigger than that now she really does make a point of highlighting their shift and the stress between their relationships now Yes, Kai has been through something very tense. You know, she was pretty much tortured in the previous novel. We did get glimpses of it. And Kai also, Kaya also resents the fact that Marine saw these episodes. I, I think the fact that their dynamic has changed so much really opens their relationship up to a lot of tension but it also does offer them each a chance to grow outside of each other marine has you know oh like i said she's always been quite content with living in kaya's shadow but things are bigger than that now she has to go save her friend sev who she is attracted to you know she i did admire again the fact that this main protagonist is um part of the lgbtq community is she pan is she bisexual you know i think that's really left up to the interpretation of the reader because she does love kai kaya and she does love sev but she could be pansexual she could be bisexual uh, and I think it's really great that the author has left this up to the interpretation of the reader. And I say that because you can use the dialogue, you can use the descriptions, you can use the dynamic be- between the characters to really determine who this character is, who Marin is, and her relationships with Kaya and Sev. And I really do think it is something worthwhile to read because it is a very real representation of you know i th- i think of the lgbtq community and i think it's great that wallace was able to bring that to life in this novel but i also think it's great that she highlighted the tension between the relationship you know Ma- marine is marin marine m-a-r-e-n in case you're wondering how her name is spelled uh She is an incredibly different person than who she was at the start of Shadow of the Sky. She's incredibly different, and I think the cover artwork as well really highlights just how different she is. And I really do think you get a sense of just looking at the cover of just how strong she has become in her journey. And I really do think that that, that that is incredible. I do think... It is something worth noting, you know, because she has become so different. She has become stronger, I want to say. She's become more resilient. She doesn't let herself get pushed around. She doesn't let Kaya push her around. And that's a lot of, that's where a lot of their attention comes from. Not just, you know, Maureen's friendship and relationship with Sev, but the fact that Kaya is no longer um, in control of the relationship. And I think she's a girl who likes to be in control. I get a sense of that from the dialogue and everything she's gone through. She went through a sense of loss of control and now she wants to go back to the way things were, except you can't go back to the way things were. And Marine, they they point that out to one another. I don't want to say Marine points it out to her because they, they both want things to go back to the way things were before. But 
they both highlight how they can't go back to the way things were before. Too much has happened to change them as individuals. They've both gone on different journeys that changed a lot about them. <clears throat> so there's that. <laughs> but I also think what Wells says in this novel is she gives Sev a personality. Um, in the previous novel, I really don't remember Sev having any point of view. You know, I think it was really just about Marine's journey. So in this novel, you get to see Sev a little bit more. You get to know a little bit more about his past. So he is more relatable in this story, I think, than in the previous novel. Because we are learning about his past, because we are getting this inside look into his head, into his perspective, we're seeing his pain, his anger, his grief, we're seeing, we as readers are seeing it all come to the surface as he's been captured by this, you know, the emperor, and it does create a more relatable character, I want to say, not to say I didn't like him in the previous novel, I did, um... And I did like his dynamic with Maureen. I did like how they grew with one another. But I think this is the novel that gives readers a stronger sense of who he is outside of his title, The Shadow Prince. And I like that. I like that we're able to relate to him a little bit more and connect to him on a deeper and emotional level than we were in the previous novel. So... Once again, you know this was shadow, this was Storm of the Earth. I have to go ahead and give it four and a half stars. It didn't quite blow me away, uh, but I loved that little dragon. I think the dragon kit is quite possibly like uh, it's just such a cute little thing. You know, I want a baby dragon. That's what this this novel makes me want. It makes me want a baby dragon. And considering how many dragon statues, and I have dragon coasters. That just tells you how much I love dragons. Dragon coasters, dragon pen holder, dragon lamps. If I could just decorate my house with dragons, you can bet I would, and my husband will not be able to stop me. <laughs> but I'm a huge lover of dragons, so I love that little dragon quick the dragon kit and I love how Rebe Rebecca was able to bring it to life so <laughs> that's the part of this of this book that really stands out for me the dragons and how the dragons are given such life and vitality even the minor dragons that are only you only get to know them in like a scene or two but you you are so drawn to them so if you are a lover of dragons I think you will really love this novel I, it has way more dragons than the first novel and I loved that uh, I loved how it expanded the plot line but still circled back to the beginning and the core of the story I do think it is a compelling story I think it is a riveting story so four and a half stars I definitely recommend it um, so go ahead and purchase the book off of bookshop.org if money's too tight, if money is tight, please support your local libraries and check out the library, check out the book from them. You can get ebook copies, physical copies, and audiobook copies from your local library. And I hope you will continue to support me by liking this podcast and subscribing to it. I hope you all have a great rest of your day and as always, happy reading.